Welcome to Cafe Racer Garage, I am Dan, giving you the skills and inspiration that you need to build a motorcycle you can be proud of, or in this case, a motorcycle table. So I currently have too many bikes, which is a good problem to have, but I do need another motorcycle lift table, and rather than going out and purchasing one, I figured I'd build one out of timber with a couple of really cool, unique features, and share the process on how I do it. So the timber shelves at my hardware store were probably the emptiest I've ever seen them due to all this COVID stuff that's been going on. So I was kind of limited to what I could use and I decided to go with pine timber decking as well as structural framing pine. So let's get into it. First things first, I need to build this main frame so I can figure out where this pivot point is going to be. I'm using my table saw to do most of my straight cuts and some of the angled stuff I'm using my bandsaw for that just purely because I'm actually building this on the table saw. Don't be discouraged to try this at home because you can still do all of these cuts with a jigsaw, a circular saw or even a plain old handsaw. So I'm ripping down the tabletop at the moment and the stuff that I'm using is a film faced plywood. It's perfect for this application because it's kind of water resistant I guess so if any coolant or oil gets on it it's not really going to affect it. The size that I went with is 2 meters 50 by 480 millimeters wide. So two things to mention here, if you're gonna build one of these for yourself, as you can see, if it doesn't line up perfectly, it will hit. And how I'm gonna rectify that is I'm gonna take these two out and throw them on the belt grinder and just round the tops of them so they're like this, so that they'll always find their own way. And the other thing to mention is this point here, no matter what you do, however you build it, just make sure you strengthen this section up as much as possible by bracing it or putting planking on the sides or even putting, I guess, bracing like that just to make sure it has no movement this way or that way. So these pieces here, one at each end, were originally designed to have the wheels mounted to them up under there like that. But since I've been building this, I've had a different idea. So hopefully it works. I'm gonna try something different and spin these guys around. So I've added this little section at the back here, which you probably won't necessarily need to do. The reason I did it was because my original plan was to have this hanging over a bit further. And I decided to make it a little bit less, which meant that I had to add a little bit to the back. And what it's actually for is for when the ramp gets into the vertical position like this, it'll actually take all of the weight rather than relying on these little hinges, which I don't trust. So these guys here I built and I just shaved the top of them because they were interfering with this piece when it came down as you can see. So I've shaved them down so they just miss with the belt grinder. And now it's perfect. And now it's time to make the foot pedal lever for the retractable wheels. You could make this out of timber if you wanted to, but I decided for mine, I'm gonna use steel.
hopefully this works because the idea behind it is to push down on that lever and lock it in place when you want the wheels and to release it when you don't. I feel like these hinges will be strong enough, but the screws that are holding the hinges on going into timber, I don't have a lot of faith in. So we'll give it a go and see what happens. What I'm building here is a couple of boxes to integrate some drawers into this cabinet so that I can utilize as much storage as possible. I found that drawers are one of the easiest ways to organize things in my garage. So putting the Virago up on the stand for the first time was quite an entertaining process. I found a couple of design faults. First one was the actual ramp pushing down on the rear wheels causing it to skid along the ground. So I fixed that and then I found that it wouldn't tilt forward when you got the bike to the top and that was because it was touching the wall. And after I fixed that, I realized the ramp was a little bit too long. So I had to chop the ramp down a little bit. Due to the fact that I wanted a 500 millimeter high table, it is a steep ramp and you got to get your front wheel over that little speed bump when it gets to the top. It is a little bit tricky when you've only got a double garage to do it in and you have a steep driveway, but the more I do it, the better I get. I tried to design the retractable wheel mechanism with the least amount of moving parts. So from the weight of the bike now on the stand, exactly what I predicted was gonna happen and those screws gave in. There's a couple of ways to rectify this, but I think the easiest thing to do is just going to be to put a piece of plate on the outside and put bolts all the way through. So these little guys I've had for years, they're amazing for putting hinges on because they'll always find the center of that hole every single time. If you've ever tried to install a hinge, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're trying to find the perfect center of a slightly larger hole, get yourself one of these. They come in different sizes. All you do is you put it in the hole, press it down so it's perfectly vertical to the horizontal surface, and then you just tap that with a hammer and boom, you got yourself a center mark perfectly in the center. No more guessing. I'll drop an Amazon link to the exact ones I use in the description below for you. If you've enjoyed this video, check out my CB750 Cafe Racer build or my CX500 Scrambler build videos.